Chelsea Football Club all of a sudden have Mikhailo Mudra coming out on Instagram and taking direct shots at the manager not selecting him and Romeo Lavia coming out on Twitter and basically mudding fans left, right and centre. I've got the full details. Then we need to talk about Maurizio Pochettino and I actually think he's done a very good job in the last seven games. Considering the first nine were eh, the second nine were eh, this third one is, is going really well. We're going to break that down. And finally, we need to talk about something that's very important to all of us, right? This channel is not your average channel. This channel, when things go well, I call it out. When things go badly, I call it out. So there is no agenda. Yesterday, I gave Gallagher praise. Oh my God, you would have thought I abused him. Everyone, you can't give him praise. Oh, no, I will explain to you why I can give Gallagher praise, why I praise Ben Chilwell at times, and why I gave the sassy praise, but apparently it wasn't enough. So at the end of the video, I'll give him even more praise, but I'll explain my logic to why we need to calm down. It's not very difficult, but before we get started, hit the like button, we need a thousand likes on this video. And listen, we're 30 away from uh, 32,700. So can we get that done by the end of this video? Start subscribing right now, 30 new subs. It helps a long way, it helps the channel grow, and I need it to help. Let's go. So Mikhailo Mudrik hasn't played a minute for Chelsea in four games. Do you think that is a 62 million pound player? Nope, no chance. Because the way he's getting treated, he's the most disrespected 62 million pound player I have ever seen. No player has come for so much money, and yet this guy doesn't get none of the superstar treat. It is getting ridiculous at this point. A lot of people said to me yesterday, oh no, Pochettino is trying to see out the game. Listen guys, what was there available at every single incident in the first half? Space in behind. It was to the point where Ben Chilwell got the ball. If he could lift the ball, Sterling was through in his own half, one on one. Can you imagine how high Manchester City's line was? You have Mikhailo Mudrik. You don't think that is needed. You don't think to utilize his pace would have been smart. No, nope, Pochettino opted against it. But yet, Mudrik has put up something on his story, a fan holding the board saying, um, but basically believe in Mudrik. In Mudrik we trust, right? And for me, this is a cryptic message. This is him basically saying, trust me. No one goes on Instagram, we all have it, we all use it, and puts up stories without thinking about the ramifications of what we are putting up. Because nobody is that sick. We are all adults, we all use our brain, and if you don't, start using. Because Mudrik wants to play, and the only way Mudrik's going to improve is if he plays. And this is a message, if Mudrik is watching this, or if Nani's watching this, if you don't start playing soon, pick your phone up, in the summer either go on loan or leave the club because there is no way you're going to improve and develop into the players you're both meant to become if you're sitting on the bench. He trusted Cassidy and Gallagher to play in the twin tens yesterday when we went into a uh, back five instead of trusting an attacker. He took off Nico and he put on uh, Cassidy. Don't get piss me off, man. You have so much pace, you have so much ingenuity. Just use your players. And people are gonna say, Alex, you don't even rate Mudruk that highly. I rate him more than Pochettino does, evidently. Because this kid's got talent. It's about unlocking it. It's about using him. And this is where I think a De Zerbi, a Ruben Amorim, a uh, Alonso, they're gonna use the attributes of these players and just develop them. One thing I have found out this year though, take whatever the ITKs are saying with a pinch of salt. Because apparently now, Romeo Lavia is out until May and he's not gonna be back for a while and there's just so much nonsense in and around them to the point where the kid took to Twitter and started liking posts. And one of the posts he liked was under Vince's account, uh, so it's a blue footy or something like that, his account. The guy talks absolute nonsense. For anyone that knows his account, it is the mo most waffle I have ever seen. This guy has built a platform of talking crap. Literally no insight, no tactical analysis. All he does is, if you don't know Gerardo, or whatever his name is, yeah, you, you, you clearly don't understand football. Well, that manager that you were raving about at Boca Juniors is now in Saudi because he got too scared to come to Europe and test himself. So don't give me that nonsense, okay? That account is stupid and that knows nothing about football. I, I stand on that in every single way. Yet, someone said to him, source, trust me, bro, and Lavia like. We don't know what's going on with Romeo Lavia. I know on good accord to, I've spoken to people in and around the club. This is on good accord. Lavia himself doesn't know when he's coming back. There is no insight to at this moment in time when this player is going to come back and play, right? Because at the moment, they're trying to work out what's going on with his body, and when he's ready, he'll come back. Why are we gonna rush him? At this moment, there's no need to rush him. Pochettino himself said, 
We need to make sure when he comes back, his body's right. We need to make sure this player is perfect. Stop putting stupid pressure on players to come back before they're fully fit. What happens? Leslie Ogochuk will happen. Pulls a hamstring out for even longer. Benoit Barriashile happens. Levi Kowa will happen. Ben Chilwell getting re-injured happens. You will consistently lose players for longer periods of time if you do not allow them to recover. It's not complicated. Stop putting all this pressure on them, especially because these are kids that live on social media. Bro, do you think, yeah, they don't have group chats? Do you think people don't send them stuff? Do you think on their group chats, they don't see the same jokes we do? You don't think they're all, they all see the same memes? They do, and they all have feelings and they have got points to prove. So for me, it's just nonsense. And at this moment in time, him coming out on his Twitter and putting it to bed, I don't blame him, I would do the same thing. Now we're getting into the portion of the video where I think a lot of you guys came for because we need to talk about yesterday's game and it's an important aspect to talk about this game because yesterday, after the game, I was low-key disappointed. I said, you know what, that's a great point, but we should have done better and should have won that game. Pochettino last 20 minutes didn't get the best out of the team, you know, blah, blah, blah. Bro, I watched the highlights. I genuinely think we got away with it and that's a fantastic point. It's not a great point, it's a fantastic point. Yes. We had opportunities to kill the game off with the Nicholas Jackson chance, which I still think he should have scored. We had an opportunity to absolutely make it 2-0 and Sterling should have scored in my opinion. People don't say fantastic save. I think he put it in an area where Edison could have saved it. So there was no conviction in his finish, in my personal opinion. Chilwell to shot it back across goal when he should have cut it back. But this is all if, buts, and maybe. Manchester City had so many chances. Haaland had five by himself. To the point where, on another day, it's a humiliating loss. So we're gonna take that fantastic point. We played very well for 60 minutes. We played very well for 70 minutes, some would even argue. The last 20, it happens. It's the Etihad. Be positive, take the point. What I want to be positive about is the first 10 and nine games, out of 27 points, we took 10. The second, we went up to 12. So that's not good. Like, let's not be around the bush. That is not good. However, from the last seven, uh, seven games, out of 21 points, we have taken 13. We have won four, we've drawn, drawn one, and lost two. Wolves and Liverpool. That, that's decent, that will do. You do that across the season, that's top four. That is what we need to be aiming for. The next two games are Brentford and Newcastle. We have to win those games. If you have any aspirations of getting Europa League football next year, or somehow miraculously catching up with Tottenham, because Tottenham have three weeks, right, where they're gonna have Arsenal, Liverpool, Man City. In one of those, that is potentially them getting no points out of nine. If we are within six points at that point, especially because we play them, we could do this. So we just need to sort ourselves out. If we sort ourselves out, we get to that stage, is uh, I think with six games left, guys, there's a massive opportunity. We need good performance every week. Every week we need good performance from every single one. Now we need to talk about the Desassi performance yesterday. I thought the Sassy was bloody marvellous yesterday. I thought the Sassy was absolutely colossal. And I think so was Levi Colwell. The pair of them did their very best to contain Haaland. It is not easy to do. Some would even say it's impossible because Erling Haaland will get chances. In that team, he's always going to get chances. It's no such thing of Haaland ain't gonna get a single chance, uh, Alvarez won't get a single chance, Foden won't get a single chance, De Bruyne won't get a single chance. We're gonna shut him out. It's not possible, they're too good. They're the best team in the world for a reason, right? That's not going to happen. So get that out of your head. The Sassy had a brilliant game, but I, I am not going to be mean if I don't tell everyone to calm down because I'm seeing stuff now that in my opinion is stupid. Oh, the Sassy is the answer for the future. Why is the Sassy the answer for the future? Is that all we need these days? Three games to just flip the whole narrative. We need another center half in the summer. We need starting caliber, unless the Sassy maintains this all the way till the end of the year. And then we go, oh, you know what? The Sassy, this is your place to lose. Because at this moment in time for me, the Sassy season's been topsy-turvy, just as everyone else. So there's no such thing as you're a guaranteed starter. There is no such thing as you're a guaranteed starter. The Sassy, Aston Villa, fantastic, player of the match. Crystal Palace, go and look at that goal that Schlopp scored. Prior to the goal, what happened to Desassi? Desassi one on one with Mateta, higher up the pitch, ripped, and then the attack started. But what I'm going to tell you, low blocks, park the bus, Desassi's phenomenal. Absolute great center half. Push him up away, 
from the goal a, lot, a little bit 40 yards higher, close to the halfway line, his weaknesses start to show. We need to learn how to protect him or we need to replace him. It's as simple as that. Conor Gallagher was bloody marvellous yesterday. Absolutely amazing. Conor Gallagher was phenomenal. I praised him. People coming at me, why well, you can't praise him? You always call him out. On this channel, let me explain to you something. It's my channel. I can say whatever I want. And secondly, and this is the most important one, I call stuff out based on performances. I don't do results-based analysis. Results-based analysis doesn't work. It is not sustainable because you'll win games one week that you shouldn't. The next week, if you perform in the same way, you will lose and get what you deserve. For me, Yesterday, I thought Connor was good. Connor retained the ball well. Connor moved the ball forward when he needed to, moved the ball backwards when he needed to. In instances where people wanted to turn it into a basketball game, was like, nope, we're going to slow down. IQ was there. High IQ performance from Connor Gallagher. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Yet people were not happy with me saying, you can't say that. Because I call out Connor's flaws when they're there, but I call out the praises when they're there. Ben Shilwell and Gusto. People said, oh my God, they were absolutely un unbelievable. Gusto was phenomenal. However, he had moments where Doku had him on toast. But like I explained in yesterday's video, that happens against Doku. Doku's that good. Ben Chilwell defensively was very good, very solid, positionally amazing. The distances between him and the attacker was absolutely amazing. However, Ben Chilwell on the ball, weak, absolutely weak. And I will still maintain that rigorously or like consistently telling every single one of you because there was an opportunity. Ian Matson would have put that ball on the plate because he's ball playing, mwah, phenomenal. However, Ben struggles to lift the ball off the floor when he, in open play. We saw that yesterday. Miss kicked the ball horribly. You need to be better than that, Benjamin. Basic Ben, you will remain until further notice. But Happy days, we've won, the, uh, we drew a game, cup final coming up. That's massive, man. I don't care how we win it. That's the one game where it's results-based analysis. That's the only games, finals. Finals are about winning. Jose says it best. Who cares about the performance? Finals are about winners and losers. We better be winners on that day. I don't care how we do it. I genuinely do not care. Penalties, thrashing, last minute shithouse. Do it. Come on, boys, bring us a trophy. Let's get in there. Come on, you blues.